Forgive me. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the diplomatic corps, friends, and members of the media, welcome to the launch of the AFC's campaign. In true Guyanese tradition, we apologize for the late start. We hope this is not the hallmark of our future adventures, but of course I believe that uh, today was a little exception, exceptional and we ask you to indulge us. It's been a long time coming, but change is going to come. We have experimented over the last four to five decades with various philosophies, various political plans, various parties, various leaders. And all of the philosophies, leaders, uh, opinion makers that we've had for most of that period have been concentrating on the distribution of wealth rather than the creation of wealth. And it's important to understand that everybody is committed to the equitable distribution of wealth. But before you can distribute wealth, you have to create it. Now, it is understandable historically that in the 50s and the 60s, what was happening in the geopolitical atmosphere, the aspirations of the people of the third world, as they were then known, required the equal distribution of wealth without fully understanding what it is to create wealth. So we've been blessed with two regimes that have concentrated over the last 40 years on how they're going to distribute wealth without spending any time on the creation of wealth. What that has done for us, ladies and gentlemen, is of course put us into all forms of security crisis. The major concern today is security. Whether it's your personal security, whether it's your financial security, whether it's the security of your children's future, we are all concerned about security. It is primary. And we have different perspectives on security because, of course, we are all isolated in the communities from which we believe we belong. But the fact is, security is a principal concern of ours. How are we going to address that? Are we going to address that by pointing at the other side and saying, you must fear them at all costs? Are we going to address that by saying, well, the other side has economic development and you have none, therefore you need to disrupt what, has, what we've achieved so far? How are we going to address the insecurities of life? And the reality is that however you cut it, however you dice it, however you analyze it, Neither of the two parties that we have had, or two principal parties that we have had up to the year 2005, have been able to provide the citizens of this country with a solution. So whether you turn in 1964 to the PNC, whether we turn to independence in 66, whether we turn to the PPP in 92, the reality is every turn that we have taken to date has not delivered to us the goods. So there comes a point in time in history where even if the odds are against you, you're going to have to make the right turn at some time. So in 2005, two brave young souls came together. Of course, because they came from the belly of both beasts, they were very, very integrally involved in and familiar with the workings, as I put it, of the intestines of those beasts. And so before they were passed out of the final exit, they decided to reverse and come up through the top and formed what I think has been the most positive political development since independence, which is the AFC. Now having said that, Everybody always wants change. But change in itself, or the mantra of change, is not an end. It is only the beginning. Because we have to have clear in our mind 
the nature of the change that we want and how that change is going to inure to our benefit in the future. We don't want change for change's sake because we had change in 92. Everybody thought in 92 the nation would have begun to breathe again because there was another opportunity in the history of Guyana for us to address the inequalities of our past. We were not the authors of the inequalities of our past, but at least we were afforded an opportunity to address it. So we thought that we'd have change. So when we say today at the launch of this AFC meeting that it is time for change, understand that we are not saying that, that we want change for change's sake, but for the first time in our history, we want to actually define our destiny and determine the route map to the, our destiny. When we launched in 2006, I think it would be fair to say that the national consciousness of Guyana was in transit at the Chetty Jagan International Airport. In 2011, I would say the national consciousness of Guyana is now firmly seated in the economy class of Caribbean Airlines about to take off from the Chetty Jagan International Airport. And the challenge we have today, not only as a party, but as a country, is not only how we are going to reverse the location of our national, uh, national consciousness, but it is how we are actually going to create opportunities for our young people for the future. We have to understand that the creation of wealth is an essential part of the development of any country. Somebody has to generate the wealth before the politicians can take it. We have learned over the last several decades, I'm not going to limit it to two, that politicians are very good at taking wealth that you have not yet even created. Long before you get to the market, you have already calculated how much VAT you're going to pay. You know how much tax is going to come out of your environment. And because we have been limited essentially to what we call uh, a socialist philosophy, and I'm not criticizing it, we spent 